Today I'm testing and reviewing the Tilt Wireless Hydrometer and Thermometer for you. Let's get started. All right, so I have two of these bad boys right here. I purchased this orange one first. Um, I've had it for a year or two. And then recently I was running a test and I needed another one for this specific test. So I bought another one and I have two of them here. I have used these tilt hydrometers for, I, well, th this one for over a year now, this one for only about six months. And I want to give my experience with them and my opinion. So first of all, the price tag on these bad boys. I'm not talking about the Tilt Hydrometer Pro or the Wireless Hydrometer Pro, which is a much more expensive purchase at $250. These are still gonna run you quite a bit. For each color is, I think it's all the same, at 135 US dollars and whatever that rounds out to for everywhere else. So what's the point of a wireless hydrometer? Well, these are intended to help you in your fermentation and your logging of your fermentation. Essentially what they do is you float this in your fermentation liquid that's going. Um, you normally want to calibrate it first in some water. So you put it in a bowl or a cup and then you float it in there. There is an app that we will talk about here in a second and you calibrate it that way. After calibrating, Let's say you haven't started your beer or your wine or your meat or cider. Uh, you can go ahead and float this thing in there. And again, you will open up this app and you'll essentially create a log. I'm not gonna talk about the app stuff yet. I'll get into it in a second. But it, it tracks point by point your fermentation, the temperature changes that occur and the gravity and bricks changes. So I'll show you a sheet right now of one of my fermentations and kind of what it looked like. Um, it's pretty clear. It's, it's a nice uh, view of what your fermentation is like. You can monitor it all the way throughout the process so you know when the fermentation is done. It kind of keeps you from having to open up and take gravity readings with a regular hydrometer and do those things. So this it's a, a nice tool that does a pretty basic function in my opinion. I don't, other than I want to get into the app stuff, but I want to talk about the build of it. It is obviously waterproof and um, they've sealed it very well. So inside is this like, I mean, it looks like a battery. Uh, well, it is battery plus little circuit board. The circuit board is probably some fancy stuff that's used for measuring. The way it measures is by how far it's like leaning essentially. The more, I think it's the more up closer to, to horizontal, the um, higher the gravity is, and then it goes down. Someone was probably gonna correct me if I'm wrong, as it lowers. The build of it's very good. I mean, it's durable. I'm not gonna go and test that right now. Um, obviously different colors, if you're wanting to collect them all, Pokemon style, do those things. The battery in here, I guess, is supposed to last over a year, and this one has for sure. If you have to replace the battery, they do, have a specific tool that helps you turn this. Basically, it's just unscrewing it and then replacing the battery and putting it back in. I haven't had to do that yet, but eventually I'll have to. So let's now talk about the app. So this app is pretty interesting. I'll kind of show you on screen. It's called Tilt2. All right, so in the app, oh my gosh, it's, it keeps trying to log all these things. In the app, you can go through and you can name your brew. So there's a bunch of stuff right here I'll show you. Essentially, so there's a like start new log. You can enter your email for where you want the log data to be sent to. You have the start new log and that's where it'll send all its stuff. You can name it, of course, like I said. There's this change logging interval. So if you have it, you can auto set these things up to basically log every 15 minutes if your app is open. Now, obviously, if you're on your phone, you're probably not gonna have this open all the time at your house, but you, if you have an extra iPad, um, I don't know, computer, anything to really run this software, you can have it update every 15 to however many minutes you wanna do it, and that will update that spreadsheet, which is super nice. I've never done that before. There is a calibrate in water portion, like I talked about, so putting it, floating it in your water to calibrate. 
Um, you can enter your pre-known calibrated stuff, which is helpful. If you know your starting gravity is something specific, you can do that. And it will kind of auto-correct for those things. Your temperature is down here as well. And then at your units. So this is kind of what your app looks like. So right now, this is the way I have it setting right now. It thinks it's at 1.100. And that's great. So 77 degrees in here right now. Again, here's an example of a spreadsheet. So you can see up at the top of this spreadsheet, you have the dates from when this thing ran. It's all your units. Then there is the gravities, the readings there, um, a lot of information. Your temperature, it's got even up here like this little graph, which I don't even know how you get to pressing on that. Your high and low fermentation temps, attenuation, which is pretty fancy. And then of course, the actual reading. So from day one, you can see that it started off about 1.064 and then it went on. I mean, that's, you got all your dates there. And then at the very end here, you can see I took it out of it and it auto did its thing. And it, the ending gravity was not 1.100. So, so from the app portion, it's uh, pretty helpful. I don't know. I don't, I don't really like using the app, to be honest with you. There are points that it's really nice. And when you get to that Google sheet, it's good. I've had a little trouble with that. Um, if you do take them out and they are active, it will, unless you've cleared the log you're going to, it will keep trying to send information, which gets to be a little bit annoying. So just closing out old logs and stuff was helpful. Is it worth 125, 100, whatever it was, $30 for one of these things? If you just have oodles of cash to spend, I think so. Has it been life-changing? Not really. I mean, I'll be honest with you, these things over the past two or three months, um, I, I used them quite a bit in the beginning. They've sat in this drawer, not really done much. And um, I just don't like, unless I'm doing a specific test, I'm not worried about watching my fermentation speeds or temperature ranges or stuff like that. I just let it roll. You know, I'm, I'm rolling with the punches. For specific testing though, if I wanna monitor how my gravities are changing, it's helpful. Is it worth doing? Yes, if you have the money. Um, if you are like trying to put equipment before quality of ingredients, then I would say no. Um, don't, don't try and go buy this thinking it's gonna make your brew taste better. It's not. Better quality ingredients will be better for you. So that's my opinion. There's a bunch of other stuff on the market. There's ones that's like an airlock that also does a similar thing. You can buy the pro version of this, again, $250. All stuff to make your life easier. Is it necessary? Probably not. Sorry this review is a little bit long. I have enjoyed getting to do this and this is just my experience. If you have purchased one of these and have an opinion about this below, feel free to comment. I'm curious what you think and uh, I hope that you have a fantastic day. I do want to give a big disclaimer and say this video is not sponsored by Tilt. Um, I have bought these on my own volition and used them so for those of you who are thinking I, I'm doing this for free or that I was paid in a product, I was not. I have invested the money in these. So I hope you will uh, hit like and subscribe to the channel. I've got a bunch of things, not a lot of equipment reviews, but a lot of recipes for mead making and some beer stuff recently. So thanks again. See you later.